All right, Uncle Sam FM here. We are on episode two of American Football. And as you can see, things are going really well. This actually is probably the best start that I've had in an MLS game. Um, the results have kind of started to cool off for a couple of factors. Um, but uh, as you can tell by, by you know the little the screen there, 20 games into the season, about halfway, a little over halfway through the, well, over halfway through the regular season. Um, I'm sitting on top of the Western Conference, 45 points. I'm eight clear. Minnesota does have a game in hand. Um, and, you know, a couple of the teams down, further down the table have game or two in hand. But uh, the results have really gone my way. Um, Got to say that. I, I won something like 12 of my first 14. We'll look at the results here in a minute. Um, but first thing, let's, you know, let's look at the squad. Um, not a lot has changed. There's a couple of things, um, a little different, and I'm on my training. Let me go to the squad selection screen here. Um, so, um, I mean, roster-wise, squad-wise, I haven't really made a lot of transfers. I did, though, add one player, um the Columbus crew waived Archer who is a Brazilian holding midfielder it's this guy and I went ahead and picked him up um, when I did that I, I, I had to loan another one of my younger guys out uh, I don't remember who I did we'll look at the loans here in a second but um, sent sent another young player out on loan and I brought in this guy who can contribute now he's obviously not gonna he's not gonna um, push Alton Top out of his starting position, but Archer can contribute at, as either the defensive mid or he can move up, play that supporting center mid. So he's, um, that was a decent pickup and he's relatively young. So um, at worst, he's going to be somebody that I can maybe trade later. So that was a, um, that was really a, a decent acquisition. Um, really the only one that I made of any consequence. I did also, um, retrain Marky Delgado as I said in my last video my plan was to move him to right back and that worked and um, he's you know he's playing pretty well you see his average rating 707 not great but not you know you think over seven is is acceptable um, you know and he is young Delgado I mean in real life he's well he recently just got his first cap back in uh, back in the spring with the real life national team so you know that's well obviously the u.s national team is not the um french national team who's in the world cup final but um you know it shows that he's he's a he's at least good enough to contribute an mls right if you can make the u.s national team you can play an mls and so um that's that's kind of the deal with delgado um and so far, all of his ratings, you know, it's green. So that all looks good. Um, speaking of the loan guys, these are some of the guys I've sent out on loan. I did also, um, Brazos Valley is my, they're an affiliate with the Dynamo, and um, both in real life and in the game. They play in the PDL, which is kind of an under-23 league. And so when... Now, their season is short, and we'll just look at their schedule here. They start in May, and they end in July. So they only play about three months. Um, there is a postseason. They do have a, um, a PDL championship playoffs that goes through into August. So I sent a handful of my guys, and usually I can't get them to go. A lot of times they say, no way, I'm not going. Um, but this time I was able to get um five right yeah five guys to go on loan to brazos valley and um you know they're doing all right over there um mimo is a big one you know I, I wanted to get these guys games and they weren't getting a whole lot for me especially you know jordan my left back um i'm gonna try to say his name S uh, no i'm not um <laughs> my um uh, my african midfielder i'll more lay silla i so sorry um if anybody knows how to pronounce that <laughs> let me know but he's um you know he was not going to get a lot of action for me in midfield so you know i wanted to get him some games so i sent him and these guys off and um i gotta be saying i'm a little disappointed i kind of figured you're sending five guys to a team that's this poor they should easily win their division but 
they're actually right now they're sitting second um they've lost like three games um they've won five you know and Mimo scored uh, in that first game he played in um Donovan scored and see Mimo scored also in this game against the energy he scored twice so he's picking up his performances a little bit um but yeah I mean my hope was that by loaning them these guys to Brazos Valley they'd be able to make it to the PDL playoffs but it's really in question right now so we'll see they're there till September uh, then they'll come back to to my squad, um, you know, just to get them some games because they do play a, they play a lot of games in that short time. As you can see, like five, six, five, ten, you know, four days later, then three days later, three days later. They did have one kind of long break here between May, the end of May, and the middle of of June, but for the most part, they 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 get a lot of games in. So um, so. Yeah, sent those guys off on loan. I did also. Well, look, we'll also look at the um, my RGV guys. Um, as RGV is actually playing pretty well, they are fourth in the USL D three. So they're they're um, well, they have a chance to earn promotion. Um, it's close. Right? You can, we'll just look at the standings here, the table. Um, they're two points clear of the Sounders 2 squad um, for that last playoff spot. But, you know, they're competitive. And so that just shows that this arrangement is mutually beneficial. The guys I've got in, in RGV are, um, well, they're, you know, playing decently well. And so, you know, we'll take that. Um, so that's kind of the deal. I did also, I, I lost the email. I think it's back in April anyway. But I got my board to agree to increase the junior budget. Um, honestly, I don't know if that does anything in MLS and FM or not. <laughs> they, I'm pretty sure that the regens or new gens, whatever word you want to use there, the new gens in FM for, for USA is, is hard-coded. Um, I don't know that, like, I've doubted for a long time that the, the, um, the youth coaching, youth academy ratings, all that, doesn't really do much as far as what who gets generated but you know it's it's in the game so i'm gonna try and do it and so i got them to increase the junior budget i do that in you know, every couple months three or four months i i go to the board say hey can you improve this improve that um always trying to build forward right get the club keep the club advancing um also during uh during the time that since my last video I have changed my training over I, I have a system with my training which we've talked about before every three months I switch our focus um, and so start the season every year doing doing fitness um, which works the um, it works all the physical so excel you know speed pace agility balance jumping fitness stamina all that stuff fitness the training fitness training develops that um and the um well then i switched to attacking after three months which that's works crossing finishing passing um off the ball vision um so the way i've kind of designed my training is that every three months i rotate and the most focus i put on are, are the ones that you know develop the attributes that I want my players to have for our style of play and so um, so no big deal just switch to that and then quickly looking at results as we said um, results have really gone well for us um, you look at that I don't remember ever starting a season with six wins but I won the first six games um, which was absolutely phenomenal especially when you look at the fixture congestion so Portland um, was a Wednesday game midweek and for some reason it looks like I was still able to play my first team although Arturo Alvarez is a second teamer um, but anyway we got an exciting win there uh, well it was a home game but it was intense uh, you guys saw the Philly win um, then we went at Atlanta United and got a huge win um, two to one thought about and I actually have that game recorded I thought about doing a com on it but I, we're just gonna do a live com on the Red Bulls game um, this game against Minnesota 
should have won this. It was a home match, but Alvarez got himself sent off, and so we ended up having to settle for a draw. Um, but then we had this game against home against Vancouver. This one, we'll look at this. This was one of the really frustrating games. I absolutely dominated this game. Um, we had two clear cut, three half. Could not finish any of them. And so we ended up with a scoreless draw. Which that's how any game I didn't win. That's usually kind of how they go. Um, but then I hit this stretch here. Um, where and it was three away games in a row. And so three draws in a row. And I've really been kind of playing around with my away tactic. This game against San Jose, I actually, as I recall, I'm pretty sure I really dominated this one as well. Yeah, look at that. 22-3. to three. And I know shots doesn't always tell the whole story. But um, we, we absolutely controlled the game. Should have won. But, you know, it didn't. Um, so I had another exciting game against Portland. Uh, this was a game where I had to play my second team. Um, I mean, maybe had a couple first teamers in there. Boniek was a first teamer. Well, he's the only one. Um, that's right, because I've been playing Delgado at right back. I think against San Jose with the first team. Yeah, trying to get him trained. So um, thought I had that game won, uh, but. And actually, I had a missed penalty in that game, too. Yeah, uh, Elise missed a penalty. Had a terrible game, like 6.1 is his rating. And he was a sub. Um, so that game didn't go well for me, <laughs> as you could tell. But uh, got through that, that three-match stretch without a loss. Um, so not great, but it just, you know, it, it's remarkable how successful the, this f first, I'm really just elated at how well, and I'm going to kind of show you maybe why I think it has gone this well. Um, but we played Colorado at home. Um, that was another exciting game, thanks to Cabezas' own goal. And I think Tommy Smith scored on a corner. Um, we should have won this game fairly easily, but you know, I had to sweat it out. Then, this was a big win for me, playing the Galaxy. Um, and as I recall, I don't, rec I don't remember, but um, this is my second team. And we stole this win. Got two goals early. Um, I think they were both, I think one was a set piece. I think Cabezas was a set piece, and then Pena scored on a counter. And so we really kind of, I don't, yeah, we, well, we, we, we won. <laughs> And the reason I was playing my second team against the Galaxy was because, and that's by the way, that was a road game, which, you know, that's, I've not been great on the road. I'm never great on the road. I've been really playing with my road tactic, trying to, because I've just had to settle for the reality that I can't play the same at home as I do away, especially not with this team. Maybe later I'll be able to, but not yet. Um, but we had the Galaxy in the Open Cup the very next Wednesday. So, um, so. On the short note or short rest, I played my second team in the league game so that I could play my number one Open Cup squad in the cup match against LA. And that was a really exciting game. It was more exciting than it needed to be. I mean, you look, I, I again dominated 36 shots to 11. Now, this wasn't an extra time game, so there was the regular time wasn't quite that dominant, but it's still. Um, should have won in regular time. Uh, Zlatan, of course, scored. And it was one of those games where I got cute, right? So I scored in the 35th minute. And so then I said, well, I need to hold this lead, so I'm going to go to my away tactic to kind of just shore things up. Well, Ledget came and scored, so now we're even. So I went back to my regular tactic, and then Kyoto scores in the 55th minute, and I... Like an Alzheimer's patient, I did the same thing and went back to my defensive tactic. And so, of course, Zlatan equalized. We went into the extra time, and this time I went with my, <laughs> I went with my main tactic. Um, the entire extra time, scored twice, and put LA out. And so, that meant that the game against Seattle was my second team, and we ended up with a draw. And as I recall, I don't even think we played super well in that game. No, didn't play well at all. <laughs> um, but, you know, got a point. Then home against Salt Lake, where we, we controlled that game, won it fairly easily. 
and I to prepare for this game that I'm about to play played my second team in the league game on Friday against SKC Sporting Kansas City and we lost <laughs> um, it wasn't a terrible performance but well yeah actually now that I look at it, it it pretty much was I mean I had 700 passes and 57% but they obviously were able to do pretty much whatever they wanted um, probably we were lucky for it to only be a um, 1-0 result so but we kind of accepted that was going to happen in a away game with my second team um, so now that brings us to the game we're going to play in a second um, but first um, tactically like what have I been doing different to be so successful I, I the only thing I can really figure um, I don't even know that this is really why but I did I usually go with inside forwards on the wing but the more I've kind of like studied or whatever um, analyzed kind of how especially I, I've looked a lot at Man City I hadn't really looked at Man City with Guardiola at all focused mostly on their time with Barcelona but even as I went back and looked some some of the old Barcelona stuff I have I kind of realized that my wingers are they played too narrow um, and so just as kind of a let's see what happens I played them at wing and what I found is that playing as wingers they function exactly how Guardiola would have them to they stay they stay wider um, and they, they find the space better out wide they stretch the opponent out more um, and like my worry was always that they wouldn't be close enough to the goal to score goals but that's not really been the case as you can tell um, in my tactic view here I've got which I got this from FM Scout um, I've got, you got seven goals from Kyoto you get eight from Minotes and those are my two main wingers um, my striker has ten you know and in 20 games that may not you know seem like a lot or whatever but they it's I mean, the point is, is that they function now more like I would rather them to. And because my team plays narrow, I think that kind of helps the situation um, for them to not be too wide. They, they, they're wide when they should be, and they frame out the goal when we're attacking, when we're, you know, when we're getting close. Um, and I've also, one thing I've also kind of done is I used to, I used to have them trying more risky passes because I, I want I would normally want them to be playing lots of through balls to each other you know um, in that final third but it was really affecting our passing and, and and possession I mean their passing percentages were in the 70s and that's just too low um, I can't I can't see I can't look at that so until they develop their passing and decisions a little more I'm, I'm not gonna let them try a bunch of risky passes um, so one other thing I thought I would do real quick, look around at some leagues in focus. I have a lot of leagues loaded. Um, some are just view only. but um, So most of the European leagues haven't started yet. Uh, some of the South American leagues, but I put up there some of the other leagues I have. So you've got Japan, who, which is a custom file that I downloaded from FOSS on the SI Games site. Um, and Cazero is number one. Antler is there at number two, which I actually got Antlers as a um, affiliate. Um, but then in the K League, Jean Book, I'm not gonna. Try, I'm terrible. Um, leads there. Uh, you got the Finnish league, <laughs> and the Elsvenskin in Sweden. Um, Malmo actually in a tie for first um, with Ostersunds. Uh, I always have been kind of my uh, Hammerby is the, the Swedish team that I follow. I won't say that I'm a fan because I don't really watch them or anything. I just kind of follow them from the outside. Uh, but they're mid table, um, and then I actually Puerto Rico is another Clausen file that I downloaded, so I've got that one running. Uh, the Chinese Super League Jiangsu uh, leading there, and then in Syria in Brazil Syria. The, the uh, Brazil Arrow, uh, Corinthians, has jumped out in front in the first eight. So, blah, 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 
let's get to this cup gatch. Now this is, um, I am going to start with my defensive tactic in this game. Because um, it is an away game. Now, I will real quick look at New York. They are, um, yeah, so they did not play their second team over the weekend. So their guys are going to come in a little tired. I'm hoping that that works. But it is a way. Um, and we both know, we all know how I struggle on the road. <clears throat> all right. You know, they are going to come at us a little bit. You can see their fullbacks are, are attacking somewhat. Um, and they're using the four two three one like everybody else. All right, I reacted pretty well to that. All right, so here we go. It's very intense. Cup matches are always there's always a little more urgency to cup matches. Kyoto with an interception to Murillo. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry, a little alarm situation. Had to sort out. Okay, Cabezas to the middle. Leonardo wins that. See, like you can see Kyoto, he's he's not he's not super wide. He's still close enough to the goal. Oh Martinez, there it is, 1-0. Tomas Martinez. That's another thing that kinda of, I, I found that having the having my wingers play as in the winger role is that it opens up space for Martinez to come attack to push up attacking, even Cabezas. Now, in my away tactic, Khabiz is set to hold his position, so he's not going to charge forward as much as a supporting center mid would. Um, but Martinez absolutely gets forward. Okay. Yeah, these cup matches, I, they're intense. Because, hey, it's winner, winner to go home. It's do or die. I'm not possessing as well as I would like. But that's partly because of the tactic. I have a style of play that I okay. I have a style of play that I want to employ, but I, I want to win, and so I uh, corner kick. These are my nemesis this year. I've been messing around with defensive corner kicks a lot. As you can see now, I've even got guys on the post. I normally don't do that because I don't in real life. See, like right there, that probably having guys on the post probably saved that. So, yeah, um, man, to lower my mentality. So yeah, I want to win, and so I'm. I have the instructions set to play to get as close as I can to my style and still give myself a chance. Like I, my back line is is backed off it's not I remember, it's either normal or it's uh, sitting back a little bit uh, I have retained possession off because I feel like it makes me kind of hang on to the ball so <laughs> yeah let's lower our mentality um, I feel like it makes me hold on to the ball and wait, just wait around for them to come take it from me. So I took that off, and we'll look at that here in a second. And let's just say, keep it up. Yeah, so I have no retained possession. And I don't even have play out of defense or work ball out of the box. Um, maybe I should, but 
when I'm away, I feel like I, I need to take whatever chances I can getting forward. Um, all these others, they hang, they just hold the ball until until the home team comes and takes it from me. So, um, and I may change my mind next time. You know, we I do a video. <laughs> Maybe I'll put one of these back because um, I've been playing around a lot with my away tactic. But right now, this has been the setup that's worked the most. I don't think I'm just gonna leave everything as is right there. I mean, the reality is, is that you know you just don't really know. It some things can be hard to. They're still having way too much. Too many of the highlights are going their way, but I can't. Um, it's not always easy to tell what the problem is, right? Um, I try to avoid rushing to, because like, okay, so playing against somebody like Colorado, where, I mean, I was dominating the game. Tim Howard had a had a remarkable game. He's their goalkeeper. For those of you that don't know, um, he made like two or three point blank saves that, that kept that score from being even worse. And yeah, I had to pull that one out in desperation because I had a goal on a corner kick, right? Um, or I think actually I think it was a free kick, um, a wide free kick. Ooh, now they're doing this. Let me go two strikers. Um, I like to make my anchor man a halfback. And I'm sit back even further. Oh, that I have to change this. <clears throat> So yeah, it's like, so I have a game like that where I give up goals, you know, and what if I had lost that game, right? right? Let me think. So they're not really coming at me anymore. But they've got both these guys on attack. Some of these decisions are not easy. I'm gonna drop my back line back a little bit. Do I have the, do I still have the, no, okay. Um, so yeah, I don't wanna rush and try and correct something that wasn't a problem, right? Just be, like if you give up, like if you lose one nothing in a game you dominate, but they score on a free kick header, where a guy just gets free or whatever, or you got a big jumbled mess, and you know, it, do you it, was that something wrong with your tactics? If anything, maybe it was wrong with your free kick defensive de defensive setup. But you know, so I try not to whatever make rash decisions based on that kind of thing. And right now, I always normally I would be subbing. I'd be bringing in guys, fresh legs, in league games. But this, ooh. Oh, nice, block the shot. Oh, come on, see that's the kind of ball I got. I can't give up. So normally I would be subbing, bringing in fresh legs, trying to hold this lead. But I want to go contain. I probably shouldn't, but. But if they if New York scores, I want to be a, I want to have some freedom in the extra time, especially when it comes to bringing in penalty takers. And I want to be able to um, if I, if my best takers or one or two of my best takers, which I don't think they are, but if I've got a couple guys I want taking penalties on the bench, I want to be able to sub them in in the extra time. You know, there I was smartly packed in. I've got I set up a corner defense where where everybody is back, <laughs> where I've got nobody playing for the counter, which may not be the best idea, but Robles just puts it out. That should be it. Okay, well that was not pretty. <laughs> that was 
downright ugly. Um, but we still won possession. Um, let's look at the overall stats. Yeah, still one possession, um, 600 passes, not great. See, like, uh, see, this is, I should have evaluated my passing at halftime, but clearly we were not passing well. Part of it, that's a team issue. Um, like, my front three are not good passers. Man, Martinez at 74%. I should have taken, I've got him taking more risky passes. I should have taken that off. Lungvist. I don't know what to do with him. I don't. What's his ratings? So he's got a f uh, 14, 13, and 13. So that tells me. He, so 77% passing tells me that he didn't have enough guys close by. So we might should have went more narrow. But Minotas and Kyoto are not good passers. So yeah, Minotas is a nine in passing. You know, decent decisions and vision, but his technique is not good. Kyoto is a nine. <laughs> eleven and eleven. So we've got to we've got to pass better. Um, I've got to figure out how to make that happen better on the road. I'm gonna note. I've got a stupid. I, I do this notebook thing. Call me lame. But um, my way tactic experiment with narrower and then maybe front three passing and MCL passing because <coughs> away I can't be letting Martinez. Um, be taking lots of risky passes. I love through balls. Through balls are how we score, but um, not great. Okay, well, so we advance, survive and advance. That's the name of the game when it comes to cup. Um, we'll go ahead and see who we're going to play in the next round. It's just looking at who's left. Ooh, Oklahoma City was an upset. It put out Real Salt Lake. Oklahoma City is a USL team, which now is third division. Um, so let's hope them, and it's either going to be them or Dallas. I guess it should be Dallas. That's who we should draw. The Open Cup is a regional draw. Um... Oh, they got Oklahoma City. So, oh, we got San Jose. Okay. Well, that's a good draw. It's a way, so that sucks. But uh, San Jose is one of the weaker MLS teams. Um, yeah, I mean, you look at their numbers. So they don't, don't score a lot. I mean, they got Erickson, Magnus Erickson. It's not terrible, but... You know, 0. 0.34 goals per 90 is not going to scare anybody. Now, this guy, that must be... I don't... Has he played for them? They must have just signed him. Um, so, that'll be... Well, a couple weeks, I'll get them. I might do another video when we get to the... If we make it to the Open Cup Final, maybe the All-Star Game. Usually, I get the first year, I get called to manage the all-star game so we'll see but um yeah real quick we'll check the mls we'll let that be the end here so this is the league situation um obviously as we saw earlier i'm you know i'm now five clear of second place minnesota um because they haven't even lost yet that's unbelievable <laughs> now they do have 10 draws so that's crazy but um they're my main competition right now. I can't see them holding that up. They're gonna they're gonna fall back. They're not gonna get that second place spot. Uh, on the other side, you got Toronto FC, who is probably they probably have the best squad in the league. Um, 
but they're getting nipped by New York City, who's got three games in hand on Toronto. So if they won all three of those, they would actually be ahead. Uh, and then Atlanta United is another. Those three teams in this first couple seasons are usually up near the top. Um, so they will. That will be. That'll be a fun race to watch. That down the road, for us, my biggest threat has to be the Galaxy. I know they're behind. Um, they're pretty far back. But that team is loaded. They've got, I mean, obviously Zlatan, but you've got Dos Santos, even guys like Pontius and, and Yedget. Those, you know, Perry Kitchen is not, he's not like this. He, he can do a job, right? You got 14 tackling and 15 work rate. Like that right there is enough to just harass the crap out of you. And then they got, well, they got both Dos Santoses. So if they start playing the way they should, um, of course, ooh, Zlatan is injured. How long is he out for? Three weeks. So if they can overcome that, yeah, they're they're not going to be... Well, you look at their ability ratings. They're fairly low. But whatever. Like, Perry Kitchen is rated two-star, but you, at where, he, where they're playing him, he, that's, like, perfect. So, um, so next video we'll look at probably at the MLS All-Star game. Uh, this is Uncle Sam signing off.